Hi everyone, thanks for clicking and welcome back to my channel. Today, we'll be talking about EHARS. What is it? What is its function? What are its components? How does it work? And last but not least, we will see what is the difference between EHARS and an IRS. Before we get started, kindly consider to help the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video. So without any further ado, let's get started. So as we have said, EHARS informs the pilot through the PFD about the aircraft orientation pitch, roll, yaw, and also slip and skid information. It is a self-contained unit with no moving mechanical parts or a vacuum system to operate. If we would like to compare the difference between a typical old spinning gyro and AHARS is that gyros measure aircraft attitude, while AHARS calculates it. An attitude and heading reference system, AHARS, uses an inertial measurement unit consisting of micro-electromechanical systems, MIMS. Inertia sensors to measure the angular rate, acceleration, and earth magnetic field, or flux. These measurements can then be used to derive an estimate of the aircraft and or object's attitude. Let's have a look at how each of its components work. Accelerometer, there is three of them that sense linear acceleration in the three axes. The accelerometer performs this task based on the change in capacitance within the MIMS. Capacitance is the ability for the body to hold an electrical charge. When the AHARS, or the airplane in this case, accelerates along a certain axis, a force is applied and the mass will move along the axis. When the mass moves, the capacitance between the fixed plates changes. This change in capacitance will be measured, processed, and it will correspond to a particular acceleration value. This process is repeated continuously along three axes, as long as the electrical power is supplied to the bus the air horse is connected to. MEMS gyro they look like this, and there are three of them. The gyroscope senses rate of angular movement due to a Coriolis effect. It also works based on the principle of changing capacitance. In, the, in fact, most of, if not all MEMS use the same principle. And last but not least, magnetometers. Three of them again, this sends earth magnetic field, or flux. They do that by Hall effect or magnetoresistive effect. Most of IMU's magnetometers work under the principle of Hall effect. The flux is used to determine your magnetic heading you see in front of you on the PFT based off the track. In an EHARS, the measurements from the gyroscopes, accelerometers, and magnetometers are combined to provide an estimate of the system's orientation, often using a common filter. All these raw data are combined and sent to a computer chip within the IMU and processed, treated, and then displayed to the pilot. Please note that EHARS is not a standalone avionic component, rather it works in conjunction with the ADC or air data computer, static system, GPS, etc. All these components are all integrated to provide the necessary information pertinent to safe operation of the airplane. Lastly, let's have a look at the difference between the IRS and the EHARS. Well, EHARS provides you with attitude and heading information while IRS, which stands for Inertial Reference System, also gives you position information. And with that also data like ground speed, true track, wind data, magnetic heading, magnetic track, etc. If you take a look at current jet aircraft, the, IR, the IRU system have attitude position. When switched to ATT or attitude mode, the IRS is basically just an AHAR system, but you will have to provide a heading reference manually. So you may think of it like this, an IRS is an EHARS plus a GPS. You can fly and navigate with an IRS, however you can only fly and maintain orientation with an EHARS. You're going to need additional information pertinent to the navigation and, uh, and this information can be uh, supplied by the GPS. Alright ladies and gentlemen, now that you have an idea of what is the EHARS and how does it work and its internal components, this brings us to the end of the video. If you have found this help video helpful, kindly help the channel grow by subscribing and liking the video. Until next time, see ya.